Hello and welcome to Let's Challenge. This week I'm continuing the Leather Whip Challenge with Stage 6, and we already see a lot of enemies coming on, including the first bat of the stage. And I think the biggest threat in this stage is the enemies. There are a few spike traps here and there, but the enemies are definitely a bigger problem here because a lot of them, um, they don't really go away. You have to kill them, otherwise they just, uh, they'll just keep chasing you and following you around and stuff. But not really so much right here. Right here you can ignore some of the axe armors and just jump over them. Which I like to do because they take a lot of hits to kill. Although you, got, you have to be careful, um, because their axes like to come back like a boomerang, so if they throw one and you're not paying attention, you could, could get hit on the kind of back path as it's coming back towards you. Okay, so now we're in the chandelier room, which is, I think, another memorable room in Super Castlevania 4. Since they uh, really nailed the sound effects and the music here, that's what I really like about it. And the uh, wood glowing effect is a little interesting too. I guess it's kind of like the candles on the chandeliers are lighting up the room, so that's a cool effect too. Although I will say, I think Simon's sprite looks a little ugly here. It sounds out a little more than it does in other areas. And it also hovers a little bit over the platforms and bounces around a bit. But it's still a good memorable room anyways. And it represents something kind of cool. Could be like a swashbuckler riding a, uh, chandeliers in a battle or something. So that's pretty neat. And then we're actually coming up to the ghosts now. Or more ghosts. Which is the ones I was talking about before that I'm a little worried about. Because um, you don't really go away until you kill them. So... I'm going to try to kind of take them one at a time in a way, take things slow, and not really continue too far forward because the ghosts will just follow me around and then they're going to be all cluttered with a bunch of enemies. And it's these white ghosts in particular that are really bad because they take several hits to kill. So I'm going to take my time here. Also, I think this area might be uh, my servants quarters area, like some of the people look like they're just kind of like servants. I think that kind of makes sense since we're coming up to a ballroom soon. So this could be where the people serving refreshments and stuff for the ball could be. Also, an interesting point about that piece of meat is that normally if you have a sub weapon that's actually a sub weapon upgrade instead of a piece of meat, but since I'm not using sub weapons, I get meat instead. And that's actually true for any secret sub weapon upgrade. They will always give you meat instead of a sub weapon upgrade. So actually in this challenge, when you're not using sub-weapons, you uh, kind of have more meat to play around with and it can help make the challenge a little easier since you get more meat. And we're coming up to some more bats, if I remember. These bats are interesting because you have to do a diagonal whip to really take care of them. I always remember those bats for some reason. I guess it's just so I'm prepared to do a diagonal whip there. I'm always ready for it. Okay, we should be coming up on some new enemies though, some skeletons and some caskets. And we also have the last bit of spike pits for this level. Like I said, there aren't a lot of pitfalls or spike traps, it's mostly the enemies that are the problem in this stage. And here's a new enemy, which is the snapping casket. And I always like to try to outrun this one, which leads to an interesting scenario right at the end. Okay, sometimes uh, that casket doesn't fill, fall in that pit. Sometimes it actually makes the jump, and then I actually have to fight it real fast. But when possible, I like to skip it. And actually, this room brings up an interesting point about the castle, actually. Like, this area is a little, seems a little out of place and a little odd, because it's like a crypt. You can see all the skeletons and stuff. Like, you can imagine a lot of people have been buried here or something, maybe. It's a crypt. Which seems a little out of place because we just came from some servants quarters and we're going up to a ballroom so it seems odd to have a crypt in between those two things but that does bring up something about the castle itself and that's in many games the castle is treated like it's its own living creature in a way like it's always being um when dracula's resurrected and stuff between games the castle itself also changes and, re and is resurrected and stuff and that's why it's always oh that one grabbed me there so if you can just jump over those hands, they shouldn't hit you. So we got skeletons and ghost skeletons, so it fits the ghost theme, kind of. Um, anyways, I was just going to say, the castle itself is kind of a character that's alive and changes too. 
all the time and that's why sometimes it doesn't always make sense I think how it's arranged like why would there be a crypt or a morgue in between like the ballroom and the servants quarters well it's just because the castle doesn't always make sense exactly and it's a game also I think sometimes the castle likes to reveal itself to people that could like people that could maybe resurrect Dracula because sometimes that's how Dracula is resurrected as different cults and things come and resurrect him and it seems like the castle itself will reveal itself to certain people like maybe the castle could be an extension of Dracula himself too although it also seems like um, some vampire hunters and stuff can see the castle when they're not supposed to too so maybe they can see through the illusion or something that kind of hides the castle I'm not sure what the story is about that I'm just kind of making stuff up but that seems to be how it goes in many games is the castle can reveal itself to people so yeah, we're going through the ballroom now, just going up towards the boss, which is also a ghost, a dancing ghost. And there was actually a hidden one up there, but I don't think I'll need it. So we're at full health, and I'll talk about my strategy for this boss. So the whole trick I like to use is to try to lower it upwards, try to keep it above you, because once it starts to attack, you can hit it from below pretty easily. And it's, all of its attacks are horizontal, so you never have to worry about doing some kind of vertical attack and hitting you. So as long as you can stay below them, you can get a lot of hits in. And right now, I think I can just do a, like a war of attrition here and beat them before they beat me. Okay. So that's it for stage 6. Next week, I'll be doing stage 7, which is the library. One of my favorite stages is because it's a library. So, yeah. As always, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.